DJ Event Planner. Electra Voice. DJ Trivia and DJ Bingo. ProX Direct. NLFX Pro. Promo Only. Odyssey Cases. Perfect Portals. JMOZ Lighting. Instant DJ Requests. And our DJ and TV Insiders. This is John Young from DJ and TV. Thanks for watching. Hello. Welcome to the Tuesday Music Show. Got a couple of um, things I want to talk about at the top of the show. We have uh, some things to celebrate today. I'll get into that in a minute. Oh. Before I do that, I want to clarify something about last week's show. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> things happen off camera that you don't see. All right. And, and one of the things that you don't see is that before we go into screen recording, there's a record button that gets pushed and everybody gets alerted that there is a recording happening and it says recording in process. And it's a woman who says it, who how he refers to as the magic lady. He says, are you ready for the magic lady? He presses record and it says recording in progress. You press OK and then we start the show. So no, how he is it on drugs. No, uh, that was an inside game. joke, <laughs> which is yeah, <laughs> kind of like when you watch the David Letterman show and he says something right in the monologue that makes no sense to you with the audiences in hysterics. It's a yeah, private joke between Dave and the audience that happened off camera. Right. He always did his own opening. He never had a hired comedian come in and warm up the audience. So, yeah, but, but yeah, he would he would talk to the audience and then he would make a joke about somebody like somebody said they were, you know, I don't know. Uh, a truck driver. He'd make a joke about a truck driver. And then somewhere in the monologue, he just dropped truck driver in there. And everybody was like, why is that funny? And everybody in, but the audience was hysterical. Right. Right. Yep. It's kind yeah. of our magic lady thing last time. So no, how he's yeah. not high or anything. So. Yeah. I, Jay, I, I am not on window pane. No. As you <laughs> said. <laughs> I apologize if I look off camera. I just dropped a hit of acid. I not <laughs> I find pick that up. It is around here somewhere. Oh, I got it. Found it. Never mind. I'm good. Yeah. Don't eat the brown acid. It's bad. Today is the 5th of July. Yep. Yes. And and we're celebrating a few things today. Uh, one thing is uh, Chico Nuevo's day. My dog got neutered. We're happy. All is well. Oh, okay. I, I thought that was the holiday that I, I skipped over out here in Cali. I'm Chico <laughs> Nuevo's. My phone. Chico, Chico Nuevo's. Nuevo's. Yep. Oh, but there's Chico another thing going on oh. that we got to recognize. And, and I want you guys to guess it's someone's birthday. Whose birthday is it today? Someone very important to, uh, to, well, somebody who has something to do with our show will appreciate us recognizing this birthday today. Um, but anyone like to take a crack at as to whose birthday it is today? My, my guess would be Aaron. I'm thinking John Young. It's Huey Lewis's birthday today. Really? So. By extension, it does have something to do with John Young. Though. It has everything to do with John. But we have to recognize today, Huey Lewis is older. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, Huey Lewis. Yes. Who can't Although you'll probably, probably be seeing this in like, I don't know, October, so it won't matter. <laughs> For the record, his birthday apparently is July 5th. For those of you keeping notes, you can yes. put on your Apple calendar for next year. So you'll be actually in real life. It, it's there's only a week lag between shows. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it's it's more fun to act like it's longer because sometimes it is. Sometimes yeah. I'll wait for a show and they just kind of forget about yeah. it. Hey, everybody! Happy 2023. We're excited to be back with you. It's like right. Yeah. Wait, actually, when did this show go the, ahead. Yeah, the window pane show, as I refer to it, that just aired just before we went live. Yeah, nine o'clock. Yeah, so we may have recorded that last week. The week before, I don't remember. Last week, it, okay. I remember it. <laughs> okay, all right. They all just gel together. I was like, cool. I haven't heard that that window pane phrase in reference in a while. Oh my god, decades! So, I was watching last week's show, and we were talking about 
maybe incorporating, you know, certain sound clips into our sets. Jay was talking about a TikTok clip that his audiences wanted. Yep. It was an audio only clip. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of got into maybe, you know, I thought that was pretty neat to watch it and, and kind of, because I'd forgotten we talked about it because, you know, mm -hmm. I got brain damage. So I was watching this thinking, what a great idea. <laughs> I thought, I still think it's a good idea a week later. Sing it again. That's a good thing. I, I think it's smart if we want to do something like that. Yeah. Now with TikTok, they only, what are they like, 30 seconds or one minute or something only? No, they're up to like, I think they're up to two minutes now, to be honest. They go to 10, oh, but it's it's wow. 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, and three minute recordings that it's offering on my TikTok, which by the way, I haven't paid much attention to. I don't understand TikTok, so I just don't do it. I don't either. It's just that, and I think we, I know Howie's talked about it, and I'm pretty sure, Brian, you were in one of the rooms when we talked about it. Um, Howie was on the call. We did a call a few weeks ago. I think it was the one with Cascade and Dead Mouse, and Chris Cox was mm -hmm. there. Right. Harry Vance from Promo Only said, hey, Chris, how's it going? He's like, hey, how's it going? He's like, hey, everyone's Chris Cox, big remixer, yada, yada, yada. How's the remixing going? And Chris goes, it's really not. Labels aren't spending yeah. money on remixing. Mm -hmm. They're pumping it into TikTok. Right. Yeah. So, I, I saw that on last week's show. Yeah. So the, the first thing you have to be aware of is if you think you're going to get new music breaking through radio channels or Sirius or here and there, I think the reality is the money's going to TikTok. So sure. knowing what's being played and, you know, I mean, when my client calls me and says they want to do the, it doesn't jiggle, jiggle, it folds dance. I knew exactly what she meant. And I mm -hmm. think she was actually right. And she goes, oh, so you know that I'm like, oh yeah, I can, I've got that clip. I can take care of that. She's like, oh my God, is that because I told my fiance and I thought it'd be 20 minutes of explaining it. I'm like, nope. I'm on TikTok. Well, I'll notice that they'll, on TikTok, you know, what limited experience I have with it is that they'll take a song and they'll put it over any video. It doesn't matter what over video anything, it is. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, at, you know, the one of the barbecues we had this weekend with the family, uh, my my other son-in-law, not Eris, the other one was there and he was watching TikTok videos and it was all music and it was cranked up. I don't know why you got to crank up a, a video where the music doesn't go with the video, but they had it cranked up and it was contemporary music, but it was all about Dr. Pimple Popper. It had uh, nothing to do with the song or, you know what I mean? So, so, okay, yeah. two things with that. Two things. Yeah, they are promoting music on TikTok. And two, what the hell am I doing TikTok videos for? I can't compete with pimple popping. Well, I think it's the no, algorithm you issue. Try. <laughs> no. I mean, it's, oh my we, god, it's the show's a week old. Ooh. But this week, the number one song on iTunes is Metallica. Metallica, yeah. Um, not nothing else matters, but it's the song they're using on uh, Strange Things or Stranger Things. I don't Stranger, Stranger Things. things. Yeah. Come on, Jay, do the program. I, I don't. I don't watch that show. That like, has to be... Like, yeah, I don't care. Well, what they're playing from Street. Is it For Who the Bells Toll? Or yes, like that? it's that one. Yeah, and that's yeah. now the number one song on iTunes. And yeah. they were saying the number one song over in the UK is Kate Bush running up the hill yeah. from Stranger Things. So the power and, of media for music, I think, is unprecedented right now. Guess what number three is? Because I just watched that Rick Beato show that came out a few days ago. What's that? Comfortably Numb. And, yeah, yeah. Was that and on Stranger Things? Yeah, uh, and they interviewed. I no, I don't know if it was on that, but it's number three. Um, it has six hundred million listens, and it's like you got to be kidding me. Just and they probably got a whole thirty cents for that. And, and oh, royal yeah, may, maybe <laughs> right. This, this is the fight I'm <laughs> waiting for. I'm waiting for this because the labels are saying you can use it because they're getting paid direct, but the artists are getting an eighth of a tenth of a hundredth of a penny per right. million streams. I'm waiting for the revolution of you know what? No, I'm taking my rights. I'm taking my masters, and I'm just going to put my mm -hmm. music out the way. Jack White does it the way Nine Inch Nails does it, the way a lot of groups do it. You go to my website. Here's three songs for free. I hope you support me on tour. And, you know, the new world order of music and industry and business has started. And if you know, you know who's you know, done that? Kate, Kate Bush owns everything of hers. So when her right. song went number one again, here, 40 years later, she got a check for a million bucks. Good. 
She deserves and good a check for her. For good for her. Well, I'm with you on the on the media thing. I mean, I it, it's been that way for a long time. I mean, the first time I can remember it happened. Well, no, I can. I guess the first time I can really remember it happening, and it was movie stuff from the '80s. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this before on shows where you know, I'm thinking about a movie like Against All Odds, which right. is a forgettable crappy film with, with terrible the most amazing soundtracks ever but phil yeah. collins does this track for it it's amazing yeah, yeah. larry yeah. carlton's tracks all the instrumental work it's got yeah oh my Steven gosh Nash on it it's got yeah peter gabriel walk through the fire which is un- one of the most underrated tracks of all time the, the a great soundtrack the, well he also did uh separate lives for white knights yeah, another movie that was like, eh, I don't know, dancers and that's Russia when those Hotel. tracks weren't released because I think that was the case with Against All Odds. I don't think that was released on any of Phil Collins' albums to no, the date. No, it was for the soundtrack. It was for the soundtrack, yeah. and that's the way it used to be. I had to buy Ford Fairlane. Yeah, to for get Cradle of Love, uh, Cradle of Love, <laughs> <Right. and laughs> Queensrÿche, um, Last Night in Paris. They didn't release it on any of their product. Sure. So you right. ran into that. Uh, oh, if I don't get the soundtrack. Right, Brett Light's Big City had like Good Love, that was Prince, and then yeah. Mars Pump Up the Volume was a one song project mm-hmm. with the, the collaboration, which was Mars. They didn't like each other and they didn't even like the track, but it ended up on Bright Light's Big City. Right. Mm-hmm. And there were other tracks on there, like I think Brian Ferry's Kiss and Tell was on there. I don't think it was on Kiss and Tell is actually on Bet Noir. Oh, is it? Yeah, that one was. I want to say that um, the Leonard Cohen, everybody knows. Tracks yes. by Concrete Blonde is on, that's on Pump Up the Volume. Yes. I don't mm-hmm. think they released it anywhere else. But the version in Pump Up the Volume is the one I can't find because it's slowed down or something. It's really slow. It's a great it's cool. It's cool yeah. the way they did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's super cool. It's almost like, that it's almost like um, Vaporwave cool. from the 80s or something. I don't yeah. know, it's neat how they did it. Yeah, no, it totally is. But it, it's sort of, it, you know, that's one of the, those bands that we don't talk enough about it. They haven't done anything in forever, but like just bloodletting, you know, just that song and their everybody knows are such great tracks. But no, that that's like for me, if I'm really thinking about it, that's the first time I can remember songs like being big because of media. But then it went to commercials. I'm right. thinking about Dirty Vegas Days Gone By from the Volkswagen commercial. I mean, that yeah. song, I knew the song. It was a good song. It was it was big in Europe. Right, and I think it took two or three years for the song to hit the Volkswagen commercial, and then all of a sudden, everybody wants to hear it. Well, and that had, was on that the had life too because it was on Six Feet Under on HBO. Mm-hmm. Trio da 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 was also Volkswagen, and that song was over ten years old when it hit that Volkswagen commercial in the nineties. Remind me, Rikoscop was on um, Progressive or Geico, which the Caveman campaign. I don't was remember that one. The airport, and they remind one. me. By Ryko Scott. I mean, it was enough that I bought it and started playing it at cocktail for weddings and had people coming up going, I know this song. Where do I know it from? Sure. And it's when I realized there was a tie-in. But I think, Brian, if you look back on the past, in the 70s and 80s, most commercials, they would just get, they wouldn't buy both rights. They wouldn't buy writing and publishing. They'd just get the writing so that they could have a band do a cover. Remember, like well, they did a lot of original songs yeah. then too. I mean, right? Yeah. But I mean, but they, Miami they Vice really started guys. that whole real music on TV. That was Miami Vice, really. When you yeah. think about it, you yeah. know, you watch the yeah, A Team and they've got somebody else mm-hmm. singing a famous song. Mm-hmm. Miami Vice right. bought, paid right. the rights for those tracks, and that's when I think it all mm-hmm. shifted in eighty four, eighty five, and mm-hmm. moving forward, people went, huh? I mean, remember when Apple was. Michael Jackson, when he got the rights to the Beatles tracks, that was the big fear. Didn't Nike pick up um, Revolution for an ad campaign in the 90s? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. I think they did. They did. That was a huge thing. Like, wait a second, there's a Beatles song on a Nike commercial? And that kind of paved the way to make it all right. Well, without, without going too far on this, yeah media does influence songs and and we used to see it in movies we don't see it in movies like that anymore not no. unless it's a throwback and the first time i started seeing throwback from media what was i gonna say was, what was i gonna say guardians of the galaxy no 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 dirty dancing dirty dancing with yes. contours do you love me i yes. mean that was a top 10 hit again good yeah. 
and, yeah, and good, then good call. Yeah. The next time I saw it with the throwback stuff was actually Pulp Fiction with Jungle Boogie. Oh my God, yes. And let's stay together. Yeah, and yeah. son of a preacher, man. I mean, that was on nobody's radar until no. Pulp Fiction hit. And now right. it's a staple, as is Jungle Boogie. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, as is so the Nights brought some together. great tracks back too. And the Yes. Yeah, they did. Are you, see, are you seeing anybody on your dance floor doing this? At, you know, some, like the Pulp Fiction dance. <laughs> if you do <laughs> well, Jack Rabbit, happened. yeah. If you do the yeah. Jack Rabbit, whatever. Uh, you never can tell Chuck Berry's song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's but, funny because that documentary I mentioned when we first came on, they mentioned that Redbone is in Guardian of the Galaxy. Oh, the, the opening sequence. Yeah. Is- when he's walking through and kicking these little aliens, around. not the, well, the 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 opening credit sequence, I should say. Yeah, the opening song in Guardians of the Galaxy is 10 CC. I'm not in love. Okay, and but then, they were saying uh-huh. that the the yeah. Red Bone track, the correlation of being yeah. Native American, yes, and that the song is played at a moment in the movie when he's got kind of a victorious walk through a scene. Yeah, and they kind of said, you know, that it's really much more of that kind of a song than people give it credit. Well, if you want to talk about Guardians, I mean, and we've discussed this before, James Gunn writes so- scenes around songs. Yeah. yeah. So he doesn't like write a movie or write, write a scene and then say, hmm, what track would work for this? He has a song in mind right, mm-hmm. and writes a scene around it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. someday, because I know Guardians of the Galaxy 3 has been announced. I don't know oh, if they're really? filming it. Yes, they're doing it. It's happening. We do a done. show on picking the 10 songs that should be in the movie. Right. What yes. are the songs? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then and see when it comes out how close we are. <laughs> I, I think he should use the babies every time I think of you. Oh, my like, God. Yeah. All that would long. be a song for that. All day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, stuff like Wham Bam, Shang Lang, and Lakeshore Drive. I mean, oh, that's on the head. Then he did The Chain and My Sweet Lord and Mr. Blue Sky, which I wasn't expecting. I thought they were probably too mainstream. But the, the the deep tracks, you know. I was not hearing What Is Life by George Harrison. There's well, we already did My Sweet Lord, so we shouldn't revisit Harrison. Uh, that's and true. My pick, what about, for, um, my pick for a chase scene would be uh, Deep Purple Highway Star. That's that would work. One. Or Burn. For, for, for a chase scene. Yeah, or Burn. I think or it would be fun to do burn, like yeah. the deep tracks, though. Like, it, you know, what song... Is no one talking about? No one was talking about Wham Bam, Shangalang, or Lakeshore Drive. Mm-hmm. You know, th- those yeah. were kind of like, wow, where did that oh, come? I forgot from? about this, mm-hmm. right? It, so you know, the, every time I think of you, it's a song that no one plays. Any like, no one ever ever plays. Undercover it. Angel by uh, um, Yeah, Alan O'Day. Alan O'Day. That would be great. That'd be great. <laughs> oh, that yeah. would be good if there's like some another. Celestial thing, celestial going. being of some kind. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see Andrew Gold get in there, maybe with Lonely Boy. Versus... They did it with Boogie Nights, though. What was in Boogie Nights? Lonely, Lonely Boy? Boy. Yeah, was it? Lonely Boy was in Boogie Nights. I don't remember that. It was during the pool scene, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, I love that. When they, when they zoom in, when they first zoom in on um, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman when he's checking out <laughs> uh, Mark Wahlberg. That's right. the song they're playing. Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's been done. Yeah. I mean, great idea, but it's been done. Huge. Did you get this? Yeah. Thing no, it's a good idea though. I mean, tighter, tighter would be another really cool one to play. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's just weird ones that people are not not talking about. I don't know. Just, mm-hmm. have, have we seen "Sweet Love Is Like Oxygen"? No, but they did. Uh, what was the sweet song they did? Did they do "Ballroom Blitz" or no? Uh, Fox no, it's on the run. Quite a few. Fox it, on the run. It's been in quite a Fox few. Fox on the run. They did Fox yeah. on the run. Fox yeah. on the run too. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could deep it. If you want to go glam, you could reach down and grab something by Slade. I guess that would be fun. Um, but they, they did now. They did that song. No, they did. Come on, feel the noise. Or maybe it was oh. We're all crazy now. There was a show on HBO, and I thought it was really interesting. But they canceled mm-hmm. it after one season. It was called. And I keep saying this word vinyl. Yes. Oh yeah, no, you know. I remember that? you admonished someone with, uh, about that. Oh no, I just America. Their records. <laughs> I'm an American you, over you know thirty-five. Went, I have records. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 you know who produced that whole show? The producer yeah. was Mick Jagger. Jagger and Scorsese. Scorsese. Okay. Yeah. No kidding. Together. I thought it was good though. It was talking about payola was, and yeah. kind of this. Yeah. You know, 
And it's one of those shows that everyone that talks about it in the Hollywood community raves and can't understand why it didn't last. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I said I it, it was came fun. down to new direction from HBO. Oh, and the writer was Harry Winter from The Sopranos. No, I thought it was good, but they they had one of the first opening scenes in that was a Slade song, uh, which was neat. It was a girl walking to the office, basically, and they're right. in, in her very 70s garb, you know, young girl. I don't know if she was an intern or what she was, but uh, that was the opening scene was to a Slade. And that's why it made me think of Slade. Yeah, that'd be cool, but it's been done. Okay. Then there's shows like um, uh, Umbrella Academy. I don't know if you've ever heard oh. of that. I've, I've heard oh, of it. I have not seen it. Oh, man. It is really good. I just wish they made it. Okay. It's interesting, but, it, but and it's weird. Umbrella Academy is a weird one for me, though, because they have a soundtrack budget. Like, they play really good songs in this. But they actually have a budget. That's it? Well, Boom. well, no. They, I mean, they have the budget for these songs. Jay knows how much this shit costs. Oh, it's expensive. I oh, think they think Jay Footloose. Yeah. They did... Um, yeah, it's big it's stuff like Tiffany. I think we're alone now was in there. There's all kinds mm-hmm. of songs in there, but mm-hmm. they don't seem to stick with anybody. Like it, it's Stranger Things is, but Umbrella Academy isn't. But I think Umbrella Academy has more songs in it, and it seems like their budget is like that's where they're putting their money for this show into music, which is crazy. Seeing how this stuff has been hitting, I don't know. I, th- I thought it would hit better. Steph costs. I mean, go back to the late '90s, early 2000s. Sopranos were blowing through. Probably a hundred to two hundred thousand an episode. Yeah, we've years. talked about that. They oh, yeah. used um, yeah. was it like yeah. a Zeppelin tune or something? Cost a hundred grand. Yeah, yeah, hundred thousand dollars for thirty seconds that Zeppelin song. Yeah, I remember the conversation with Boogie Nights at the end of the film. They do Living Thing Electric Light Orchestra. Yeah, and mm-hmm. they were they were trying mm-hmm. to get the rights from Jeff Lynn, and and Jeff was like, "Hey, look, I have kids." I don't think I want my music associated with this type of film about pornography. Because and, at the very end, they actually do the full frontal. <laughs> well, it's 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 yeah, not real. But, yeah, they, song, but, but that's the end of the... Yeah, that's the song they play at the end, Living Thing. <laughs> and so they say, well, why don't you watch a screener of it? Yeah. You know, come over, watch a screener, and, and then decide. And we'll tell you where we want to put the song. And at the end of it, I guess he was like, F yeah, you used my song, this is awesome. So yeah, until he changed his mind because it was a good film. It's mm-hmm. P.T. Anderson. And I mean, if you've never seen anything by P.T. Anderson, anything he's done has been phenomenal. His mm-hmm. last one, have you seen his last one, Brian? Licorice Pizza? No. No. It's supposed, yeah. Again, it's Licorice Pizza is the name of a famous record store in L.A. <laughs> in the 80s. 70s, I've heard 80s. of it. Yeah, Licorice Pizza. That was, I don't remember where it was, like, but I've heard of it. It was on, stop. I think, Melrose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was L.A. Melrose. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was a chain. Maybe it was, I'm not sure, but I know there was one because it's Licorice Pizza was where the first Motley Crue album, when it was on their own like sure. leather records, kind of debuted in their front window and they uh-huh. did all this decoration, but that was Licorice Pizza. Sure. The band, is it Hem? H I M? H A I M. Hem? Oh, I don't know. Heim. It's the three sisters. Oh. They're yeah. in the movie. And their parents are in the movie, and the daughter plays one of the main characters, and they showed a clip. And they're like, was it tough acting? She's like, no, that's my mom and dad. Those are my sisters. We just had a normal conversation in a room. Like, <laughs> this is what we do all day. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to see, but it's P.T. Anderson who did Boogie Nights, Magnolia hmm. with Tom Cruise. Yeah. He taps into Amy Mann really hard, too, from music. But he, I think he's... He's up there with Quentin Tarantino in my book as far as picking great songs. Yeah. That scene of um, I got a brand new pair of roller skates. Yeah, brand new key. Yeah, Melanie. Yeah, brand new key. Yeah. Man, <laughs> talk about a great scene for that song to be in. But I still think the best was the murder scene at the donut shop when he starts playing God Only Knows. When he comes out and they play Beach Boys God Only Knows and you see yeah. all the characters start crossing each other. You know when he goes in to get donuts? Yeah. What movie was that? It. That was Boogie Nights. And no. they play God Only Knows. And you sh- they show all the characters and where they've gone. To. Oh, oh, at oh, the end. At the end. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. at the end. Wow. I remember now. Yeah, I don't think people grasp how important the music is. And I saw an interview with Jan Hammer about Miami Vice. They would send him the scene. 
and say, yeah. here's the scene. What do you got? And he's yeah, up in upstate New York with a keyboard going, uh, and then he would send the, the dat tapes back. Mm -hmm. and he'd be like, cool. Like, can you imagine having the skill to look at a, a scene and go, this is what it should sound like. Not what mm -hmm. song you should have. Right. I think that's a little easier, but it's still well, very difficult. I mean, people but, that pick music for movies. But that's composing. Out. And right, I like exactly. I like both. I like the I like composers, but then I also really dig what Brian was saying about, hey, no, I'm gonna write the scene around the song because I already have the song. So that's like whoa. It's so almost different. music video esque, you know. Yeah, it's just different. I did a wedding where the last song of the night, the bride said, I want something different. I want to end on a slow note and I want it to be memorable. And I had just seen Wise Guys. And I said, mm -hmm. what if I play the back half of Layla? Like I start at the piano and mm -hmm. I just play it. You had just end. seen Goodfellas. Goodfellas. I'm sorry. What did Goodfellas. I say? Wise Guys? Wise Guys. Yeah. yeah. I think like a comedy. Guys. Yeah. I'm like, what? Okay. Yeah. 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 I keep yeah. you on your toes, Brian. I know he's not a movie brain. guy. I wanna, I he's just keep not him. a movie guy. Your doctor said, keep him going. Keep him. Say things he'll argue. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that scene where they share the couple in the pink Cadillac that's, yeah. that have been killed. That was definitely good, fellas. Yeah. Yeah. And they're playing the back half of Layla. Mm -hmm. And I did that at her, at her wedding. And she went to hire me for her parents' wedding, which, or anniversary in 2020, which obviously didn't go. But she mm. said people still, like eight years later, will mention that she had the best ending of a wedding ever. Because <laughs> everyone <laughs> the was like, massacre scene they're good all out there and they knew what was going on and they knew the track, but they couldn't yeah. figure it out. Like, And she, she, she got what she wanted. She was crying and everything. I didn't base it on a killing. I based it on this well, will be memorable. <laughs> it so happens it was slaughter. the beginning of a murder scene. <laughs> I, well, I can't control no. everything. <laughs> It's funny you should say that about murder because this the song itself was written about this unrequited love for someone else's woman, you know. Right. Which I then found is actually a famous poem written mm -hmm. in Arabic times like 10 million years ago and there's this whole story behind it. Now you're making stuff up, huh? No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> Layla's a famous poem. It's it was he didn't it's not the words that Clapton used. But the point of the poem is this guy's looking for this girl mm. and and just chases her through the desert trying to get her. It's that unrequited love thing, which he mm. thought he would have. It's still shocking they stayed good friends, isn't it? Him and George Harrison? Mm-hmm. I mean, they were good friends till the end. One yeah. thing's got nothing to do with the other. Yeah, that's my point. Like, he didn't view it as the same thing. <laughs> Most people do. That's a, lot, a lot of people, Brian, I know, if you took their wife... Eh, may not be having drinks with you the next day. Probably not. <laughs> Just saying. Unless she's in him a favor, ultimately. You know? Yeah. But it's going to be interesting to see if TikTok is where music is being broken now. What's on the horizon of how the industry will deliver new music to us since videos are gone? Movies are going backwards, not forwards as much. It seems like the social media environment has become the new playground for check out this song. The only downside I see is music will come and go at lightning speed. Yeah. So oh you, my God. You won't yeah. even have time to register yeah. on the charts mm -hmm. because if it falls off TikTok by next Monday and didn't break the charts yet. Well, you'll, it, it goes back to the old days where you really only had to worry about the best of the best. Right. I think it'll you know. it'll be the great separator now. Like the really, really good stuff will stay. And mm -hmm. the fly by night one hit wonders that, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, U, and you, like stuff like that will just be like yesterday's mm -hmm. news by the afternoon. Yeah. Right. And that's how it used to be. <laughs> Time yeah. uh, we talked about this in the last show. I just watched this broadcast and I don't know if I articulated my point well or explained it well, but I remember how fast things used to move back in the old days. Oh, yeah. They, well, you they didn't really have songs did. that stuck around for a long time, you know? Well, like, especially 84, which I think was the greatest year 
for music. It was one of the greatest. Yeah, it was it good. Was really, it, there were so many different styles mm-hmm. of albums all vying for that number one spot. So if right. you had a number one album for four weeks, that was, you know, that was a platinum record, you know? Right. You, you just think of the albums that were like back and forth, and maybe they only got a week or two, and you look oh, back yeah. at how amazing they are, like the please synchronicity, you know, it's like, yes. damn it. Nobody that, paid attention to it. <laughs> that first five years of the 80s was such a transitional on all levels. I mean, whether it was yeah. new wave, whether it was punk, whether it was metal, whether it was progressive. I mean, like, it just seemed like everybody was firing on all cylinders. I mean, well, they really alone. Fire. Oh I just, my God! I th- I think it, everything went real strong. I've always, I've said this over and over again. It's like a broken record, but I think the '80s went to 1992. I yeah. mean, it was strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have. You I have agree to, with you there. And yeah. you even gave examples of songs into '92 that, yeah, they fit with the '80s for sure. Oh yeah. Well, it was it was it was progressive. I mean, yeah. and I like progressive. I I like yeah. things that get better and learn and grow. Mm-hmm. I don't like doing the same thing forever. I hate doing the same thing forever. I like things that, you know, mature or, or change mm-hmm. and, and progress. And I also, quite, I've never been the guy who wants to hear the number one song. I've always been the guy who's heard the number one song and would like to hear what's next that maybe nobody else is hearing mm-hmm. before it's the number one song. Right. Like, hey, I liked I Had the Tiger before anybody knew what it was. Everybody knew what it was. I was burnt out on it. <laughs> I was done with Eye of the Tiger. I didn't want to hear it anymore. I'm that guy. Yeah. But, but most people aren't like me. Most people are you there, know, going with, very going with the, the mainstream. Right. And, and right. They're, yeah. There's very few times. I mean, I, I used to go to a lot more shows than I do, obviously, now. And I fall back on 1990 Spit, Tuesday night seeing Macaulay Shanker in April of 1990 and one of the opening acts was the black crows. And it was probably one of the few times I've ever been to a show where I'm like, they're going to be huge. They have it. Because well, the just, Gaga thing and, well, and anyway. you know, but I didn't see it the way you guys did. I was like, she's good. I didn't see her being the next coming. Did you? I thought she was good, but I don't think we would, you know, 14 years she later, it was the most interesting thing. I'd million seen in a dollars of time. performance. Oh yeah. I just didn't think of, I, I thought it was cool, but I thought like cool. I said before, yeah, I and I don't mean to sound like that guy, but I've always felt like I was a couple steps ahead of everybody else. I don't want what you're doing right now because it's popular. I want the next thing that's going to be popular. Hmm. Yeah, but wanna, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little band? bit. Did I'm you like the ahead. band till they got popular and then didn't like the band anymore? Like that was a big punk and new wave thing where like. People loved the Smiths till they got big, and they went, "Oh, I don't like the Smiths anymore." Right. They like the Clash till the Clash played stadiums. Like, oh, I, I don't listen to them anymore. I'm waiting for the next thing. Well, I well, think it's great to wait, but don't you know turn who, your back you know on what you to? like. You know who ha- that happened to in my circle was Blondie. I knew you were going to say Blondie. Yeah. Well, because when when they, you know, turned that you know heart of glass into a disco thing, oh my God, the punks were like, oh. You, you know, oh my God! You're well, not you know, here, here's I'm going to defend Blondie. Oh, I, I'm no. I, I, lines are good. I'm album. just saying what happened with that particular group of people. No, I I think that Blondie, as a the band Blondie, not Debbie Harry, but the band, not Blondie, Debbie Harry, but the band, the band Blondie. Okay, here here's a challenge. Find me two Blondie songs that sound alike. That's no, what, Blondie song sounds like the other Blondie song. Yeah, that's Heart of, what, nothing that, else sounds like Heart of Glass. That's what made her so one way or another. Yeah, nothing else sounds like the tide is high. Nothing right. else sounds like a rapture. Telephone. Right. Yeah, they, they're or all telephone. uniquely yeah. different. It's like every time they did a song, they did a new thing, and I think that's cool. They you know who else did that? You know, I think is um. Is, She's the fastest one to come out of Max's and CBGB's, like like these other ones, like television, like practicing for a whole year and opening for, you know, like Ramones or something. Blondie just shot right up there as a group because, like you said, every song was different and every and she had so many hits. 
What okay. is um? Who was David Burns' band? I for like, Talking Heads. Talking Johnny Heads. I think yeah. There's there's yeah. another example of their songs don't sound anything like each other. You know what's crazy about that? I was thinking about Talking Heads before you even said it. Yeah. yeah. Not Talking Heads, but it's Tina, mm-hmm. the bass player. Oh. With, yeah. With Tom Tom Club. Yeah. Well, with, it's Tina mm-hmm. and her husband, love. the drummer. Tina Weymouth and is it John something the drummer? I don't. Re- I don't. Because they're married and they were Tom Tom Club too. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that think about Psycho Killer, which yeah. is an early one, or yeah. let, let's, you know, bring it up a couple of years and do Take Me to the River. Do Love Take Me to the River. Oh, I think that's one anything. of the tracks. And then put it up oh. next to James to Love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, there's no, 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 no. Not it's not like either. the Beach Boys doing Sail on Sailor. What the hell is this? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like that. And I like that, you know? It's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or wish you any money doing Maybe I'm a Fool. That is a different tune mm-hmm. than anything else Eddie Money does. Two cool. Tickets to Paradise and Baby Hold On are similar. You know, you nothing's like Maybe I'm a Fool. I feel that way about Machine Gun from Commodores. Yeah. Totally off mm. the map. And again, a track from Boogie Nights, but totally off the map of who they are. Or Billy yet, Preston out. Well, maybe let Billy Preston out of space. Yeah, but maybe. I mean, the stuff he was in with the Beatles is very different than that. Totally. But yeah, I, I like the. I like it when a band does things that are you. When a band does the same thing over and over again, like ACDC. Yeah, yeah. but ACDC is meatloaf and potatoes. If I order it yeah. in a day, anywhere yeah. in the country, it's, it's, it's I know what I'm getting. Comfort, comfort right, food. but when I feel There's, like meatloaf yeah. and potatoes, that yeah. I don't want a different yeah. sauce, and I don't want mm. a cheese or gratin potato. I want mashed potatoes and They're, meatloaf. And that's what ACDC is. It's more yeah. like McDonald's. Yeah. You could go. You could go to Holland. You're like, oh, I'm in Holland. I don't know about food. Well, let's go to McDonald's. Yeah. I know what McDonald's tastes yeah. like. It's the same yeah, but, here. And, and, and when you want McDonald's and you're in the mood for it, there's nothing better because it's what right. you want. And ACDC, yeah. I think it's, you know, and I'm going to say something that might fly in the face of the critics. <laughs> I think sometimes it's even harder <laughs> to sustain a almost 50-year career churning out the same material over and over again. Oh, I, I didn't. Yeah, no, don't time. get me. I, I wasn't. I wasn't Let's dismissing it, Rolling ACDC. Stones, new and old. They're on, once they got into the '70s, the Rolling Stones found their footing in a formula. The Rolling Stones' music of the mid '70s, their newer stuff. There's there's continuity there. You know who they are by a couple chords. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they didn't grow. Well, they fell into a. Here's where we're going. It's an open A tuning. Let's do this. We've got a formula. Let's stick with it because it's party. It works. But it's rooted in what they love. And there's nothing more honest than an artist that gives you who they are. I don't think ACDC has ever walked off stage and said, oh, my God, get me my scarf. I need a back rub. I mean, like, they're who they are. I respect that. Right. right. They, they, they probably drive themselves to the show. Probably do. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. I no, I, did, I I wasn't suggesting there was no place for them, or I was not trying oh, to. No, no, no. Them. I'm I was saying, just I think suggesting something to be in. They're consistently ACDC. Right. right. You know, oh my God. Who is this? You're never going to guess who this is. It's never an ACDC song because you right. always know it's ACDC. Yeah. But you would, mm-hmm. you would, you know, if I asked you who's saying Sail on Sailor, you would be stuck. Yeah. Until mm-hmm. I told you it was Blondie ACDC. Chapman. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a good example. That really is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it is or not. But no, it, Blondie was that way. Blondie was always doing different. You know, they didn't do "Call Me" twice. They didn't do the Titus High" twice. They certainly didn't do "Rapture" twice. No. Right. One way or another, they didn't do twice. No. 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 In, in fact, that's the probably got telephone? more punk roots to it. Hang on, the telephone. That's another telephone. punk song by them. Total yeah. punk song. Denise, yeah. Um, yep. yeah. And I think they did those as a way of showing homage to old music as well as, look, we're still kind of got a punk edge. Sure. Mm-hmm. I think people misunderstand Blondie and Deborah Harry. She wasn't yeah. the band. She was the singer. And I don't even know how She's much writing singer. she did. Right, right, right. Like, I think Chris Stein and the band wrote all the music. I don't know that Deborah Harry writes yeah. music. No, but she sure looked good in a t-shirt with jeans that with the where they're ripped at the knees oh my god you gotta play that, that way you flush 
You're you're like bright uh, red. Is that the light? I know. We should That's start playing uh, reminiscing by your little river saying, band for how I was, I was this no. close to her. She'd come by and you know it was just like, hey Deb, hey hey how you know that was it. You no, know, like very respectful. They were always very respectful to the crew because they knew we held the power to make them sound good <laughs> and look good. You could give him a speaking mic or you could give him a talking mic. Uh, you always I, gave him a, a, a singing mic. Always. Yeah, give him the singing. Yeah, I gave him, him the yeah. talking. No. That's why they like to. Wait, no, quick no, memory. No, you just thought you just of a band that needs to be in a movie. <laughs> Little River Band. Yeah. 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 All day. Yeah. What's wrong? Um, Lonesome Lane. Uh, I was just going to say that. Yeah. No, that's no, the one that's not on anybody's no, radar. Anymore. I was, I was going to go somewhere else because in a movie, somebody needs to be rescued. Hang on. Help is on the way. Hang on. Oh, that's, that's a good song. one. But yeah, I think Lonesome one. Loser is the forgotten Little River Jam. There's that one. And then the other, the Calypso one that like sailing the sea alone. Cool change. Is it cool change? Yeah, I'm um, cool for change. Cool but there's, change. I, I got to look at their catalog. There's an Albatross the Whale. Well, they're my they brothers. Did. Yeah, yeah. There's that, a rocker but, they but, did, but I think that's like more of a like reminiscing is very lexicon, and I think cool change might kind of be too. It's almost Pablo Cruzy. Okay, yeah, um, I'll give you that. Like cool kind of love, you know. Mm. But oh, I got one. Squeeze. I could go for here and squeeze, pull another nail from the, my heart, or tempted. Ooh, ooh. Squeeze was never my jam, but maybe the mm. tempted's a great track. Mm. What about Argent with Paul Carrick? Um, the only the Argent song even on my radar is "Hold Your Head Up." Hold your head up. That's that's the, the track I'm, I'm talking playing. about. Yeah. yeah, hold your head up. That's that, that's the only. I mean, one if I you're know. going into battle, hold your head up. Hold your head up high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. we should just make our own movie. We got enough music. Uh, I could do that. We, we just, just need to write a premise around it. Do you know what I think would also be like tons of fun? For me, you probably wouldn't care, but I, I think it would be fun. To and, and do it like as a as a Twitch stream. <laughs> okay. You do the real Purple Rain soundtrack. Not the Prince album, but the movie and the music that was in it. And what it was, what it should have sounded like if Prince didn't have so much control over the soundtrack rights. Mm. So it would be at the time, it'd be Apollonia Six, it'd be mm -hmm. Des Deckerson, it would be the guy who did the original music score. It'd be all kinds of neat stuff. That yeah. the soundtrack would sound very different if it was put together like a regular movie soundtrack. I thought that would be fun. No one's done that before. Well, they probably have. And that would make, make it. That would make a good show because then you would just pick a yeah. particular artist or movie or entity, and deep dive. And I've got to find the name of it, and I'll send it to you guys probably in the chill room. There's a guy that had a short-lived podcast where he would tear down a song, and he would research everything about it, the instrumentation, how it was played, and he's the one that got me turned on to saying that the greatest song, rock song of all time. Is Bob Seeger Hollywood Nights? No, it's Rich Girl by Hollow Notes. But this is how he explained it. There are two and there are two different drummers playing. So what he did was he got the tracks in stems, and as he's talking about it, he's like, "Okay, here's Mike Smith, the first drummer. Sure, here's the first opening, the drummer, and he's doing an actual drum line. Now here's what's playing on the other side from him, the other drummer in a different room. And there, when you listen to it, they're physically two drummers, and they're not like it's sure. not just hi-hat and snare. They're doing, like, fills against each other. He's like, and here's where the lyrics came from. And here's the isolated guitar track. And here's the isolated keyboard. He did it for Queen. He did it for a bunch of bands. And it's insanely interesting to hear the original pieces. Like, I'm sure you watch that Eagle Vision, the making of different albums. Right. On VH1 Classics. Yeah. And they're on YouTube. And they go into, like... Just Peg by Steely Dan. Yeah, I've seen that Seven one. solos. And they ended up going with Jay Gradner's first take. Mm -hmm. Seven other guitar players did solos, and they played them, and they all sound good. But the guys in Steely Dan are like, ooh, ow, ooh. And then Jay Gradner solos like the iconic piece that he did in one yeah. rip. Yeah. I, I think we could get Taj Mahal in a movie, too. You don't really hear anything by Taj Mahal out in the public domain anymore. Well, um... If you're gonna, if we're gonna do this, 
I would like to do the dancing scene from the time. Because the first time I tried to do that back in the day with Purple Rain. You're talking about Jungle Love? I, I, I'm, I'm, or the yeah, I'm, I'm definitely... I'm definitely a white guy that can't jump because I tried to like look to the left, look to the right. My legs are going, you know, you know, different direction. And I fell over. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. I I fell. I fell down. <laughs> I did. I it's, like, it's, oh. We all have our own superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> just not like, yours. At is- the time, how he's pushing what looked like a front doorbell going, <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> <Get up. laughs> is that a doorbell? And I'm oh, no, no. 24 years old and I can't get up. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. But it's true. I did try to do that dance and I fell. <laughs> it looks easier than it is. I've tried it in private. Uh, I, I opted it? for the private. I can't do it. <laughs> so if you had oh, to guess how many people are watching see. this on the broadcast, right? Like when it's broadcasting, what, what, what are our numbers? Like I might be in there watching it. How you might. Robin's always there. Robin's right. always there. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe Mikey's there. Maybe Aaron's there. I bet you there's eight people watching this broadcast right now, like it, it, when it's being broadcast. Mm-hmm. Right? It's my guess, eight. But no, actually, seven. It depends. It says there's ten participants. Yeah, so it says three 10. of us. Yeah. No, I mean when it finally goes up on YouTube. Oh, when it makes it to YouTube. Yeah. Well, because oh, people never understand it- genius and greatness in its time. This will be big in 50 or 60 years. People yes. will be like wearing our is, T-shirts. It gets restreamed <laughs> and unbeknownst to all three of us, you know, John has it as a podcast for drive time listening. Wouldn't you love to and, find out that's big? Wouldn't you love to find out that we're known on like Apple podcast or something? And we like, are. Oh my God, I listen to you all the time. What do you mean? Look, you've had 12 million streams. Wait a second. Yeah. Seriously, well, he, I do need. Well, he, he made a post. He he made a post and said, "Hey, yeah, the, these guys are getting between five and ten thousand just people listening and not even <laughs> seeing our faces." Yeah, I need an agent. I don't have that many moms, so it's not me. It's not me. De- five to ten thousand a week, or I, just I of all know, the shows. I don't. I I don't know. Um, all I but know is suck to find that out. Like if we looked it up and we were like number three this week behind Joe <laughs> Rogan and like, 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 yeah. like John Young just, just bought a fleet of Teslas for his yeah, family. Like that's why John's never around because, anymore. I'm because of our podcast. He makes so much money off. Yeah. That's where the money's going. Like, yeah. Where's John? How he's building a new house. <laughs> yeah. Apparently he's a off big one. <laughs> I thought I saw a picture of him with Elon Musk the other day, but I didn't think it was John. Right. So I'm just discounted that, you know? <laughs> Jeez. Oh well. Well, here's another show for you. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. It was we, fun. We started. Oh, we're done. Okay. Well, we we can keep going if you want. But well, was... no, no. What you do is say, and thank you, folks. And then that's when Jay comes in and monologues for another ten minutes. By the way, well, that's yeah. what I was kind of thinking would happen. <laughs> Jay's going to have some final thoughts that have nothing to do with what we talked about. Right. Go. Go ahead. No, I'm pretty yeah. chill tonight. I'm pretty. Wow. This is a good topic. I'm pretty good. Yeah, I got nothing. Is it, is it the window pane? I don't know. Well, well maybe, maybe, night. maybe Brief. next week we try to organize our thoughts on Everything these topics and speak more articulate about them. Maybe that won't be as much fun. Probably maybe not. It's more fun when it's you know ADHD off the hat. We no didn't net. take our Ritalin today, kind of conversation. No nets. These type of shows seem to be the most popular though, because they. I think see when we joy. mentioned that during the show, that's joy. probably do it at the end like that. Yeah. No. The, 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 I've actually seen the comments because I do go back and look at them, and people yeah. go. You guys, we could tell that you guys are music guys. You love music. You guys are just, you know, crazy like that. Like, it's just like fun to watch, you know, and listen we, to. We could do a show and tell you how to become a super rich DJ. Oh, and buy we don't my- have anything to sell or any websites right. you can join. So money is boring. It's I, I, it is. Not money not to me is it boring. Is. It when is. In the grand scheme of things. Cash is boring. What's cool is what cash is cool. Buys. Having the right partner is cool. Having the right wife or the right person in your life. That's cool. Money no, can't yeah. buy you the right person. I know people with some money or, or married to some nightmares. I don't have money. I got I got wonderful upstairs. Now having cool kids. That's us awesome. Three, us three are very unique in that we 
all three of us have lovely, lovely women in our our lives. True. We're very, very lucky. Yep. <clears throat> no, but money's not the, those, To me, those are the cool things. When, when people yeah, want to talk about cool. making money, that's right. boring to me. That's not art. And, yeah. and what do you do? Just buy a bunch of crap you don't need with it? No, nah. do what you love, do it well, and good things will happen to you. It's done. Yeah, now man. let's talk about the yeah. art. Let's become better artists together. Mm -hmm. Quote David Lee Roth, money won't buy you happiness, but it'll buy you a yacht big enough to sail right up next to happiness. <laughs> I'd still rather have the happiness than be next to it. <laughs> yeah. It's probably some cool people on the yacht. Mm, probably. I'm willing to find Maybe. out. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not. Hey guys, yeah, I'm on the yacht. There aren't cool people here. I'll be just don't have to join a yacht club about it, you know, because I don't want to join any club. No, I don't want to join anything either. No. Yeah, Jeez. any club that would have Brian prob probably isn't worth Brian joining. Oh, a Groucho Marx uh, joke. Oh, I love way it. Back. Well, he was he was on to something. The more I think about that quote, the more I'm thinking he was yeah. a deeper thinker than what I think we give him credit for. Oh, yeah. Well, he, was, he was brilliant. He really was. All right, fork time. Fork in it. All right, kids. All right. See you next time. <laughs>